guess we should start it. It's 15:15. Uh, And I'm very happy to join you here and to share some of our experience uh, developing uh, one of the first AR game that ever launched to the mass market. Uh, before I started, I'll give you a little bit introduction of myself. My name is Zhang Zhu Yun. I work with Directive Games, a Shanghai-based company studio that's developing AR and VR games. Uh, and today I will share with you some of our insights and experience back when we develop our first AR game, The Machines, which uh, launched last year together with Apple on the stage with iPhone 10. And after that, I will give a little bit outlook in our perspective how uh, AR gaming will moving forward in the next couple of years. Okay, to start with, I want to uh, first touch a little bit about the definition of uh, AR, augmented reality. What is augmented reality? Because uh, it's a quite new thing to most of the developer. We've been heard, we heard it a lot, but we really actually talking about what is it. If we search it on Google, we'll find it, the definition would be a, it's a technique that, it's a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on the user's view of the real world, thus produce a composite view. And to us, it's very important to, to know what is our definition of the technology and how we want to implement it, to execute it. It's very important. So to us, we want to add a little bit to the original definition on Google. We want to add, it is a technology that superimposes a computer-generated 3D image in a 3D, spatial, in a 3D space on the user's view of the real world. That's producing a composite 3D view. And how, at the time when we developed the machines, it's difficult for us because whenever we started to make a game, we look around and see what other game developer is doing, how other people are doing, making their own games, so we learn from them. But at the time we developing the machines, there wasn't much AR game out there in the market for us to learn. Basically, before iOS 11 launches, there was no AR game that has been played by many players. So we look around at the time, there are some interpretation by other developers, like this one is a uh, by net, it's a portal. You can put it a portal on the street, so you can walk through the portal into a different world. That is a give you a very uh, immersive experience for st storytelling. And then this one, no need to introduce this Pokemon Go, and it's a very successful game that utilizes AR in a way and plus uh, geolocation service. And this collects the player through uh, geolocation and allow them to collaborate with each other, allow them to socialize with each other. And to us, what is our approach to the definition? Our approach to the definition, as I said, is a 3D and in 3D space. So we start to experiment after Apple launched uh, ARKit last year. In a couple of weeks, we tried different ideas, like uh, you can take a uh, selfie with a robot standing next to you, or you can project a ghost in your room that scares people, which really not, except the one actually looks into the phone. And at the time, we were developing a, a strategy game. It's called The Machines. We were prototyping a game. Prototyping a game. The game, we want to... The goal for that game, we want to create a high visual fidelity game that is, uh, can be played on the mobile phone. And soon we realize it is very fun that is to have the robots in front of you, not to take a selfie, talk a, take a photo, but to control them, to combat each other. That is the thing we think fun. It's like childhood dream come true. When you're a child, you always want to play with your friends, with your toy soldiers and tanks, and push them around and destroy your, your friends' toy soldier. And this brings that to life with special effects. 
and we think it's fun. And in a few weeks, we produce something that we think was very exciting. This is the first video we, uh, we took, in-game footage, actual in-game footage we took at the time after maybe two weeks of development. We used our um, already made art assets and level and with um, Unreal Engine, we put it into the engine and starts to make, an, make it AR and using an um, iPhone to project onto our table right in front of you and experience that. So you can control robots. And we put this on YouTube and it went viral. At the time, oops, it doesn't play. Let me. After we put it up on YouTube and when people saw it, they think it's just another visual stunt created by some uh, software like After Effects. It's not real because at the time, very few people actually have ever seen an AR game being played in real life. And they think, oh, this is not real. And, but it is very real. It is it's a game that we, uh, in our office, we put it on the table and we played it there and we tested it out. And you can see in this and you can see in this footage, let me pause it um, and rewind it back. In this footage, the, the, the player doesn't really move too much. What they do is he's just panning the camera around and look to left and right. And we think what we could do to make that like a real AR game, because AR, we define it as a 3D image in 3D space that should incorporate players 3D spatial awareness and the player is merely moving he's just standing there you can see he's just panning the camera around and try to command the robots to go in around so that that is our first challenge why we want to have this game played in AR instead of just traditional 2D screen. And uh, we start to experiment on different things. And one of the things very uh, interesting that we noticed by playing over and over again this game, uh, this prototype, as you can see, there is a bridge here. We noticed that whenever our robots went under the bridge, we lost eye contact with it. We don't know what it's doing, what's going on there, especially when you have your enemies uh, also under the bridge. You don't know if you are talking them correctly. Are you de deploying your ability at the right place? And you have to walk around. You have to go around the table to the other side of the table to look at the, the, the battle and to look at un uh, what's happening on the, the bridge and to give correct command. That is the part that catches us. We think that is the fun part of it. That actually allows the, play, allows the player to utilize the 3D spatial awareness he gets by using AR on a traditional game. In a traditional game you played in, on, on your uh, mobile device or on a PC, you input your view angle. You control, you use your mouse keyboard to control where you look at or you swipe on your touch screen to change the view angle to gain more spatial awareness. But in AR, you are controlling the camera. You are controlling where you look at. And for that, that is a very interesting thing. So what we did is we take down the old map and create this new whole new map. The difference is that you can, as you can see, we have rock formations, buildings, and the bridge is still there. And we have building structures and rock formations that blocks the player's eyesight. So in traditional mobile game or traditional real stra uh, strategy game, real-time strategy game, we have this mechanism called fog of war, where you obscure the player's uh, uh, situation awareness. That is from the very early on uh, war simulation game where we, want, we don't want to give perfect information to the player. We want to give them uncertainties because one, certainty is very fun to have. You don't want to know everything. The second is that, that, that is realis, realis, realism. In real world, you don't see everything. 
think about if you are commander in the in the battlefield and you don't know what's going on behind the hill unless you can actually see it. If someone tell you or you can use your satellites to look behind the hill and you say, Oh, there is some enemy ambush behind the mountain, that information you gain you can't have that information by just looking at it. So this is what we call it the it's a true Fog of War, where your eyesight's been blocked. This screenshot is taken from the starting points of one of the player. So when you start the game, if you look, you don't know what your enemy is doing. You don't know which direction your enemy will coming from, and you will need to make decision where you want to go. You can go. Uh, there are three different roads. You can go attack if you play the uh, uh, Dota or League of Legends. You probably very familiar with this strategy and you need to choose and it's an AR so you can walk around the table to find out more information so you can just turn around to go around the table and look okay he's approaching my base through that road then you can make strategic strategic decision I will uh, sneak in behind by this road I will just let him to take one of my tower there and I was sneaking from from a different road to behind of the base and attack, or you can go head on head to get a showdown at the center of the the battlefield. That's your choice. And we think that is the one of the fun parts. Didn't catch up in traditional gameplay, and that is very important for AR gaming. And the second thing, as I say, do you play with another player? That is also very important. AR game won't fly until you can play with your friends, until you can get socialized in the game. So we provide multiplayer gameplay that you can play with another player, play with your friends right there in front of um, uh, a table at the same place, or you can play it on the internet. And this is how we in interpret this concept, this new technology, and we create this um, uh, trailer video that's to capture this essence. I think some of you maybe already watched it. I would just play it here. Uh, in this trailer, you would say th the scenario we think is the best scenario for such game to be played. So as you can see that uh, player uh, gathering around on the table and they deploy the troops and they fight with each other. The big difference here compared to traditional game is that the, the, your locomotion is getting involved, you moving around. And to get more information, you have to constantly change your position, looking at that different direction, deploy your troops, deploy your abilities at different locations on the map. That leads to success. And very interestingly, this creates a very, very different social activity. So in traditional game, you can see the player just sitting there staring at the screen and, and uh, swiping on the screen and use, or use their mouse and keyboard and the, the, the audience is just looking, staring at the screen and there's very, very little uh, social in involvement happening between the player and the audience and between the players uh, especially. So then what is the challenge if we want to create such game? We come across several different challenges that all of them is actually uh, we spend a lot of time to solve. The first thing is uh, the visual fidelity. I think for us it's a very important thing to have visual, high visual fidelity in our game, in the machines to start with. As, and it is as the first ever AR game being launched to the mass market through iOS App Store. Um, we are also de developing VR games. As you, uh, some of, of you maybe know VR games very well and uh, it started with Google Cardbox at the time, a couple of years back. And when it started, we have uh, lots of different uh, experimental projects on there, and most of them is not a very good 
experience in terms of the technology. One side, so the uh, the card box doesn't really uh, meet the standards of VR. Sometimes you have very low resolution. You have uh, very jerky frameworks, uh, free frame rates, and. Well, most of the people using it to watch 360 video, and some of the 360 video also very in uh, very low quality at the time. That's how the VR started in a, in a mass marketing. So that hurt the player and the market in a way. Uh, in traditional game, when we say the gaming experience is not good, that means the game is not fun to play with. Or the user experience is not good. Maybe the UI doesn't really give you much information about what you are playing against. And in, in that sense, you just ditch the game. You just throw it away and pick up a different game to play with. You can find some game you really want to play and enjoy it. But in VR, that wasn't the case. In VR game, when you have a bad experience, that means it's really bad. It hurts you. When you're playing a game with a very low resolution and very jerky frame rates, what happens is that your your brain reacts to it, your your body reacts to to it physically. You feel dizzy, you feel sick, and you get motion sickness. You you want to throw up sometime, in the worst case, and you probably never want to touch the game. And that happens a lot. A couple of years back, when millions of uh, card box or card box, card box rip off their all kinds of being given free in all of them, seeing that people are give, giving that free. These things produce a very, very bad uh, experience in the sense of VR, and it hurts the market a lot. Whenever I talk to people, oh, do you know VR? Yes, I've tried that using uh, one of the free card box with my, my uh, Nokia phone. And they got motion sickness, almost throw up, and would never play that again. And that's hurt the market. So when we start to work on uh, AR, we want to deliver something awesome. Some, some, the experience has to be very cool to play with and to look at. Since the player has the control of the camera, they can do whatever they want. They can go around and they can zoom in, go very detailed. They can, as you can see this screenshot from the game, you can really zoom into the details and see what's, how the stone looks like, what the flower looks like. And this is our first challenge, how you can do that, put it off on a, on a mobile device. And um, of course, with the by using Unreal Engine and plus the AR kit, we managed to pull out this 1.2 million polygon in a single scene, and there's a lot of uh, performance issue we needs to solve at the time. We spent a lot of time to solve the performance issue. You can see when we transit from our old map. Uh, let me turn it back. We, when we transit from our first version of the game, we can see there's a very little things on there. The map is all, all, almost flat. There's one road and one bridge and go into something like this. This give you this. This is a give us a very big challenge over there, and especially in uh, this is it's very different compared to the traditional game where uh, when we develop in a traditional game, we don't need to render things that the player doesn't really see because they don't control the camera. Things behind their uh, eyesight, we just don't render them. But in AR game, you can do that because as a developer, you give the full control of the camera to the player. They can always go to any angle they want to go to to look at the combat. Some of the some of the players just bring out a game. You only wants to look at all the details and go around and ignore the the gameplay over there. So that's our first challenge over there. And this is very interesting. This is a photo uh, picture I found on Google, and I think this represents one of the major uh, challenges we had uh, in developing both AR game and VR game. Uh, as you can see here, this photographer is taking a photo, uh, of course, and there is uh, this little cute penguin behind him, and obviously he's not seen this little penguin, probably he's fo taking photos of other penguins. And the challenge here is in, in VR and AR, in AR, as game developer, we relinquish the control of the camera to the player and give the player full control of the 
camera. In traditional game, we don't do that. Even though you have games that where player have most of the control on the uh, uh, of the camera, where like in a FPS first-person shooting game, they can control fully their camera where they want to look at, where they want to walk to. But in a traditional game, you at some point you always give, you always take control of the camera. Like for example, in the lobby, in the lobby you have your character standing there, and you allow the player to fit it. That you. Most I, I don't see much game that allow player to walk around in the lobby, and in the uh, end of match screen, you freeze everything and show up this UI telling the player the stats of the game and what 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 is the results of the match and such. So at some point, you always take the control back. So you controls the camera, the, the 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 player don't control the camera. But in AR, it's not the case. In AR, the player always has the ca control on the camera. Once you st start up the game and you have the camera, and there is no way that you can tell the player, hey, look here, if you don't look, I will pull your camera over like we did in traditional game. So the challenge is how we convey information. So what, how we can control what they see when sometimes when you have a big explosion happening on, on the right side of the battle and the player is still looking at the left side of the back battle, focusing not even on the battle. Sometimes they're just looking at some stone or flower because for them the AR is a, quite a new thing. They just want to enjoy the detail. Or they are focusing on the, on the engagement with, uh, with the enemy, so, uh, enemy robots. And something important is happening on the other side of this, on the other side of the battle, and you want to pull them over. So we, uh, in that, we create uh, several things to try to uh, solve that issue, like uh, UI arrow that are pointing on the edge of the screen to the towards the direction where you should look at, and that helps us to to ease this. But this is only part of the issue. One other big issue is that our old in uh, in traditional game, it's all about framing. So framing is the thing that we've been uh, experiencing. That in last couple thousand years, we create arts, we create uh, photograph photographer creates their arts in by by taking a photo, and we create movie and traditional games. You all have a frame. Like you looking at this picture, it's framed. Everything is in the frame. So in AR, the frame is different. The AR, in AR, you can't control this frame, so that you lost the ability to to uh, do traditional storytelling. If you want to do storytelling, that's very difficult for you. Then you need to to think about how you want to make the player make sure they know what you're trying to show them. This is a photo. This is a Dota uh, esports. Esports is is a very exciting thing. That when we uh, develop the game, we think about a lot about esports. It's in AR, AR changes esports. Let me show you this photo. This photo is with well, how we we took uh, in our studio. Two player, uh, two of our colleagues playing the game around the table, and where you can see that in this screenshot uh, taken from a third. Uh, device, you can see uh, they are they are playing this battle, and it's basically you, you. That's it's very strange experience, and it's because today the eSport is played by two lines of players sitting in front of a computer, and they have their hands on the keyboard and mouse, eyes staring into the screen, and nothing really happened other than that. And suddenly they yell, "Hooray, win!" and very very little interactive between the player, very little interactive between the uh, player and the audience. So the inside in-game experience and out-game experience is separated. There are two different experiences. Here, with AR, what we can achieve is that to unite in-game experience and out-game experience all together. Think about this scenario. Uh, when you're a child, you play with your friends with your toy tanks, toy soldiers, when you push them around. And after many years, you still remember that scene. Well, this may be 
become black and white memory, but still you remember. Oh, you played. I played with this uh, friend Bob, and we played with my with my、uh, GI Joe toy, and we played in this way. And that way, I hold my hands up. Like, why you remember that is because your locomotion, your body movements, is involved in that experience. And here, AR provides you the same type of experience when you playing AR game. Your body, move, your body movement, your body language is incorporated into the game experience. When you look behind the rock, your 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 opposite,、uh, your opponent think, oh, he is looking behind the rock, and he is probably doing something behind there. I need to go there and to check it out. And you may want to say, hey, there is a bridge. Let's do,、uh, let's deploy、uh, a tower under the bridge so I can cut him off guard. That kind of That that kind of、uh, interaction between you two, and even more is that when you go around the table and trying to to、uh, deploy your troop in a different angle to attack different things, and the opponent player can actually come over and push you away, that never happened in a traditional、uh, game. So, how AR change esports is that to incorporate the Positioning of the player into the game—that it was never a thing that in in traditional、uh, esports you never cared about where the player sits, where the where the、uh, the audience is. The player can sit just there、uh, in front of the computer, and that's all. And but now it's like playing a temp- table tennis when you're watching a real sports. It's real sports plus e sports, right? But here is a here is a problem that traditional Esports broadcasting, we have、uh, the computers connect with HDMI cables that directly pipe it through a、uh, big screen, and you can see what the player is looking at. Or if you are playing on a mobile、uh, device, that you tether it with the HDMI cable, and you can still、uh, pipe it directly to a to a big screen, like what we're doing here. But in AR, the player controls the device that when the When the player controls the camera, it shakes a lot because when the player moving around, he has expectation where he's moving to, and he has he know his hand is is what his hand is doing. He's pointing here, pointing there. But as an audience, you don't know that. You have no expectation at all where this guy gonna move the camera to. Have you if you have ever watched a YouTube video, some、uh, amateur? Uh, video that's、uh, some some、uh, well you you may be know what I'm talking about. The camera is shaking so often that you barely see things. is It's very bad experience, and that makes you feel、uh, nausea, feel sick by just looking at that screen. So here is a say, you we can't just. Connect the HDMI cable to the player's handsets and let do the e-sport broadcasting. That is for the audience good. They don't want to. You don't want to make your audience all sick. On the other hand, when you're playing this type of game, you can't just have a cord constantly tethering to your device. Because AR game requires you to control the camera and walk around, to move around, to look at different directions, and quickly respond to whatever is happening on the battlefield. In that sense, you can't have this thing connect to your phone because that's not very convenient. So, in the solution here is obvious. You need the Perspective mode that allow the third device to be there, and the third device controlled by someone else. That can be moved in a very smooth way, and if we, if we add into more uh, uh, development time, we can even have uh, uh, to pinpoint where the phone is and to have the special effects emitting out from the phone the player is holding. That will adding another layer of the of the fun to the to the esports for AR. And that we think we believe this is where the direction is, and we are doing some experiments and see how that's gonna come come along. So, how are we moving to towards? So when we started, we have this uh, uh, horizontal 
tracking where we have to put everything onto a table or onto a floor and to play with and you are centered you walk around this uh, rendered out battlefield and that 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 is uh well very interesting already but the things that we also want to that is not very intuitive for some of the player when uh, when you're holding up a phone, it's very, it's not very intuitive that you have to move to get more information. But on the other hand, it's intuitive for you to look around, holding your phone like taking a photo, like you pan your camera looking into d different directions. Uh, well, the machines won't become a game like this. Well, uh, it's a rendered photo, but this is uh, what I'm trying to show you here. Is like you, w the the next step we want to go into is to allow you to hold your phone up and doing vertical tracking, and where you can see uh, computer generated images that is being rendered in in a inward out kind of way that you don't need to work around the table, but you can turn around as making yourself as a pivot center. And AI and VR is always go hand in hand, hand with hand, and we are developing both of them. And it's hard to not to bring VR up if we want to look into the, into the market, because now we are doing most of our development focusing on the AR, because it, we believe AR has a larger market in the near future. And this diagram shows you what happened with the VR. We are started with Carbox, and for the consumer, it's a very, very confusing uh, div uh, development there. And we start with Carbox, and then you come with uh, Vive, and then you have uh, Microsoft, uh, MR and uh, Sony PlayStation VR, they don't know what's going on here. They don't know where they're going and they want to know if they're going to make a purchase, what, what they want to buy. They're going to buy a car box or they're going to buy this uh, uh, $1,000 Vive Pro. And on the other hand, AR is very easy to understand. The consumer will very easy to understand what's going on here. It's coming along with the uh, HoloLens and the technology is getting more and more accessible and more and more easy to use it's more easy for them to make a decision to purchase uh, AR devices uh, like a tablet uh, or a phone. And the revenue for AR and VR, we're projecting that in our uh, view in by uh, 2021, we'll have uh, the, the revenue generated from the AR side will uh, uh, surpass twice as it generated from the VR side. This diagram shows uh, is a projection of the in 2020 there will be close to uh, 130 billion US dollar generated in the global game market and you can see there the tablet and the phone represents uh, 60 almost 60 percent of it and we believe that 10 percent of it will coming from uh, AR and VR and large chunk of that will be uh, from AR because you look at how much how many devices out there. Uh, that's that are uh, AR ready compared to VR devices out there. And a little bit on our uh, studio, we are based in Shanghai. We are uh, a group founded by veteran game developers. Our mission is to create amazing uh, competitive multiplayer games that, uh, as I mentioned, is, has to be online and competitive. Uh, multiplayer, you can connect with other players, you can get socialized with uh, other players. And our team members worked on uh, a lot of AAA titles uh, around the world. And recently we collaborated, uh, Directive Game collaborated with uh, HTC and uh, Warner Brothers to work on a VR game that is uh, using the IP of uh, Ready Player One, I believe. Uh, maybe lots of you already watched that movie. And thank you. If there is any question, feel free to ask. Well, 일단 내용 잘 들었습니다. 어, 저는 지금 AR 게임을 하나 준비를 하고 있는데요. 제가 이 관련 기술들을 좀 찾아서 공부를 하다 보니까 좀 현실적인 문제들이 몇 가지가 있더라고요. 좀 현실적인 AR 게임을 만들기 위해서는 이런 공간에서 보이는 조명이 게임에 잘 녹아나게 만들어야 되는데 어, 지금 제작하신 제품들 중에서 그런 조명 문제를 해결하신 게 있는지 궁금하고 
또 다른 하나는 이제 배터리가 되게 빨리 달더라고요. 그래서 이 배터리 문제를 해결하기 위해서 했었던 것들이 있는지도 궁금하고 마지막으로 어, VR보다 AR이 조금 더 어, 미래가 밝을 것이다. 근시 근 미래에 더 밝을 것이다 라고 전망을 하셨는데 저도 좀 비슷한 생각은 하고는 있기는 한데 그렇게 말씀하신 게 어떤 구체적인 데이터를 보고 분석을 하신 건지 아니면 어떤 개발적인 환경을 보고 분석을 하신 건지 좀 궁금합니다. 여기 okay, I will start with the first question is that uh, so uh, the how realistic we can create an AR game in, 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 in on the mobile device. This is a good question. It's like we think the realistic coming from the lights, of course, but to a large part is from three things I think is most important. That is the scale, the orientation, and the direction. So not only the light make things. If you if you have something without a light, you may see that is not real. But light and color is not our main perception on some objects. We look at it, and we if we move around it, if we see the orient, if we feel the orientation, the scale of it, we will think that is real. Our brain will will tell us that's probably an obstacle. In front of you, that you need to avoid to run into. So, nighting is of course one of the most important things. Is at the current stage, I think, when doing that, if if you have some brilliant idea to solve that problem, of course, that's very good. But at the moment, I think it's more important to have a immersive. AR scenario where you can actually experience the, the distance, that is the scale, you can feel the scale, you can feel the orientation, you can feel the, the whole thing, the whole thing feels right. And then we have lighting and shadows projection. Now we, we, we in our cases, we use, uh, we use uh, pre-baked shadow, this is just uh, fake shadows at the moment, uh, not spending too much time on, of course we want to create good looking lighting and shadow experience over there as well and at the same time we want to create the experience how the player in a 3d space to get to gain the spatial awareness and that's our focus and second the second question is on the the, the battery life and uh since we since last year we have uh, collected a lot of data on how player use ar uh, it's very different compared to traditional mobile games where a player put it out on a, on a bus station, put it out on the subway and they start to play it and it's uh, five to ten minutes uh, session and dotted everywhere in a day. Most of course you have, you have peak hours. Uh, but for AR it's a, uh, it's a slightly different. We noticed that uh, the player use the game in a longer session, 20 minutes or so, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and they use it fewer than you, they play traditional games because they have, you need to prepare the place to play it. You need to find a place and you need to uh, bring it up and do the tracking that takes you probably 30 seconds or so. Uh, well, of course, when the technology advanced, you will have less time to, to do the tracking, but still, you need to find a place. There is some limit on that, so the player will, will uh, treasure that play time a bit more. They take longer session. They play it 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and, and that's it. They go back to whatever they're doing, and maybe uh, later that day, they will bring it up and play it again. And uh, for the AR and VR, we think we firmly believe that it, now it's a very different technology, uh, two of them. One, you need to spend, uh, what, 2,000 US dollars to have a set of uh, uh, capable VR devices, and the other one is more accessible, and one, you just need to pull out a phone you can play, and the other one, you need to maybe drill some hole on your walls to fit this lighthouse. I think, but in, in the future, at some point, I think we think it's near future that AR and VR will fuse into one thing that something that you can both play VR and AR and 
AR on the phone today is, is still it's in its infancy. It's on the phone. It's not the final stage of it. Eventually, it will become some wearable device where you can put it uh, on your. Uh, uh, it's a it's a AR goggle or something like that, and at the same time, that also can play VR. We think that is the the future there. Thank you. I have a question about the draw core. Uh, as you know, VR game is uh, should have a very low draw core because it has uh, many dimension. So AR is AR also same. So how do you decrease the draw core? Uh, that is a that is a question I need to go back and take a talk to my uh, tech engineer, but uh, I can answer that in the more broader and general way. That is uh, one of the uh, one of the issues we encountered when we develop an uh, air game as well. We need to decrease the draw call, especially if he wants to have to run uh, the game on some older phones because these phones doesn't have very good uh, performance. Uh, we need we try we spend a lot of time to control that uh, but to the point where how we took we control those things is that that's a question I need to go back to talk. But uh, later on, I can just uh, maybe give me your email address. I can just come to home and <laughs> do some study on that technique side. Um, well, in general, we try to uh, to minimize every possible area to reduce. To remove anything we don't want, to keep those things is most noticeable by the player. So there is something that's to good to have on the on, in, in the same, but it's not necessary. And the player they look at specific thing specific things on the battlefield. Sometimes when we do uh, level design, we were trying to get too much things on there and to try to have way too much things. Uh, because just because uh, game design, I think that's the best thing to have. That looks beautiful, especially in the AR and VR game. It's all about looking. We want the player to look at all the details. But in the battle, in in a game, we also guide the player where they should look at. And in that way, we we guide we focusing them on different things. We don't allow them to focus in too much on some of the detail. So overall, we uh, we. In, in that way, overall, we reduce a lot of unnecessary things to be pop up on the on the in the game. Thank you. Yeah, 안녕하세요. 그 저는 두 가지 질문을 드리겠습니다. 첫 번째는 그더 머신 게임에서 그 여러 명이서 한 테이블을 보면서 이제 각자의 폰을 가지고 전쟁을 하는데 그 문제는 그 위치 같은 위치를 같은 위치에서 같은 로봇을 여러 명이서 같은 시각으로 봐야 돼 같은 같은 시각이 같은 시각이 아니라 위 예, 위치 정보를 공유를 해야 될것 같거든요. 예, 보통, 음, 다른 게임에서는, 그, 루, 뭐, 어, 룸이라는 뭐 그런, 그, 좌표가 있어서 그 창고를 하는데, AR에서는 그 참, 절대적인 기준 좌표가 없거든요. 예, 그래서 그더 머신에서는 어떻게, 그 위치 좌표를 공유를 했는지 예, 그 점이 제일 궁금하고요. 예. 두 번째는 더 머신 같은 경우에도 와이파이나 블루투스로 게임을 할 텐데 그런 기술적인 기술적인 그 자료가 언니얼에서 제공을 하는지 예. 예. 
굉장히 궁금합니다. 예, 감사합니다. Thank you. Uh, so to the first question, uh, there are several ways we can do that. Uh, like, uh, how do you coordinate the, the, the positioning of the battlefield? So, uh, well, you probably know that recently Google launched their uh, anchor cloud, where you can share the anchor points through a cloud, where one player get the anchor first and upload it to this lo uh, cloud and share with another player downloaded from the cloud, and so they have the uh, same anchoring. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is is a more uh, uh, a manual way where two player starts the game session at the same direction that means uh, if you have a table and you the player one just go there and from the same direction then set up the AR anchoring and the player two go there and from the same direction set up the AR anchoring this way it's not very accurate of course uh, well when we uh, made the game last year we don't have uh, anchor cloud and that that kind of thing to communicate these anchor points well, of course that is will be best if we have that but if you're doing that uh, as a game in like a mobile game it doesn't require a hundred percent accuracy when you're doing this anchoring if you coordinate the two player they they start the game from the same direction they they start the the vr track uh, the AR, ar tracking from the same direction. That is not accurate, but it solves the problem. The two player will feel they are battling on the same battle, and you have less than 10% of uh, not very accurate positioning. I think that's not the going to break the show. So, But in the future, of course, you have more uh, different ways to solve that. Of course, uh, and uh, also, there are geolocation-based uh, positioning share that there are basically four different ways you can do that. Uh, uh, using cloud, anchoring cloud, that you to share anchor cloud in the future is probably one of the major, the mainstream ways to do it, but uh, don't get uh, limited to that. If your game doesn't require a very high accuracy of uh, position anchoring, you can just have them to tracking from the same direction, and that's the that's for the first uh, question. Uh, can, can you see see the second question again? Uh, can you see the second question again? I can Wi-Fi나블루투스로통해서이제여러명이서같이게임을하게될것같은데요그런그기술적인기술적예기술적인그방법을언리얼에서 음, 사용할 수 있는지 뭐그 제공하는 기능이 있는지 예예예 예, 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 그거 예 감사합니다. Okay, uh, to that question, yes, the the game is played uh, through internet. Even you are in the same room, is st you still matchmaking through internet? It, it's not uh, we we using a backend technology developed by ourselves. It's called Kalio. Uh, this. Uh, this backend technology allow player to sync their uh, playing uh, status over the internet, and that also solves some of the latency issue you may have by when playing uh, on, on the mobile uh, 4G or 5G environment. So that online uh, part of it is developed by ourselves. It's a it's a backend service we have our own. Thank you. More questions? Pokemon Go has been a big part of the AR game for AR game. But after that, 
그렇게 그 매출이 많이 나는 게임이 별로 없습니다. 그 지금 AR, VR, AR 시장이 더 앞으로 나가면 나가려면 그러니까 더 커지기 위해서 뭐가 장애물이고 어떻게 해결을 해야 될지에 대해서 의견을 묻고 싶습니다. So Pokemon Go, uh, we call it an AR game, but it's a very soft AR game. It's uh, it's basically that's geolocation plus uh, collecting. That's the fun part of the game, and as just mentioned is that geolocation is one way to sync the, the uh, three, uh, computer generated image on, in the real world. And, but with AR, to start with, you, you think that you pull out of the phone, you always need to track the plane and uh, find uh, your, your anchoring points, then you generate that 3D image in front of you. That's kind of uh, too much for a Pokemon Go player whenever you run into some place and it's all about time, someone else is going to get it, and you pull out the phone and you're still tracking someone has a better phone that do the track better, and they're going to win for that. But to move the technology forward, the tracking time is uh, less and less. I believe there will be a better experience if we want to put, uh, do a geolocation-based game with AR kit and AR core. And uh, as a matter of fact, we are experimenting some uh, some of the things is uh, where you can allow you to put out a phone on the streets and to, to uh, deploy some of the things just on the street, and other player can come over and see you what what you're doing over there. Uh, I think that's that's very interesting. Well, uh, at this stage, AR is still quite new. Uh, it's still just only uh, a little bit more than half a year since uh, AR, uh, iOS 11 launched and AR Core is catching up very quickly. And by looking at how much devices out there that can run AR game, it, it's huge. And it will take some time for the majority of the player to accept it, to adopt AR, because it's still something new. This, with a lot of people is still playing with the with traditional game. But well, by no means that I will say AR will replace traditional game, but they will blend well into each other, and uh, AR will take a chunk of the revenue in the future. Thank you very much. If there's any more questions, you can always come down to the talk. We have a talk. Thank you.